back again, and I want to talk about some plot-related stuff. Um, I recently, well, not so recently, but I did get an email from Alexander Davis. He says, hey, Glenn, for your next email grab bag, I would like to see you talk about the cattle drive idea, D, as you mentioned. I was thinking about doing it, that for 1E, AD, and D, giving XP for saving cattle from various incidents, sort of a wagon train to the dungeon. What do you think? Well, first of all, I think it's a great idea. And secondly, it got me thinking about MacGuffins. Now, for those of you who don't, because basically the cattle drive is one big MacGuffin. Let me tell you why. Let me define MacGuffin. And Wikipedia says, in fiction, a MacGuffin some, is a plot device in the form of a some goal, shared object, or other incident that the protagonist pursues, often with little or no narrative explanation. The specific nature of the MacGuffin is typically unimportant to the overall plot. The most common type of MacGuffin is an object, place, or person or other more abstract types include money, victory, glory, survival, power, love, or some unplanned driving force. That's the key words right there. Driving force. I mean, if you think about it, most things are driven by MacGuffins. Um, the One Ring in Lord of the Rings. Um, in the later Pirates of the Caribbean movies, Jack's Compass. Um, also, um, Davy Jones' heart in the dead man's chest. Um, the Ark from Raiders of the Lost Ark, the Ark of the Covenant. Um, other things are, somebody mentioned North by Northwest, where the MacGuffin is just to survive, to, 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 Roger Thorndike is mistaken for a, a secret agent, is pursued by the bad guys. Well, that's his MacGuffin. He wants him to stop. Um, and other things like that. Well, that's great for one plot. That's, you know, it's really good for a plot. And a lot of, like I said, a lot of plots are driven by MacGuffins. Well, there's also an overarching MacGuffin that you can use for like a, a story arc, which is why, which leads me up to the cattle drive thing. The cattle drive is one big MacGuffin. And don't think for one minute that people like in uh, television shows don't do this. Um... A lot of the shows out there, you know, it's a MacGuffin. It's there every week. It's part of a story arc. Um, you know, um, Star Trek, Starfleet, that's a MacGuffin. It drives the plot a lot of times. Um, other aliens are, are a, a MacGuffin. Um, I remember the old, the old uh, Western, The Guns of Will Sonnet which starred Walter Brennan and a young kid who was his grandson, and they were looking for Will Sonnet. Or, I think it was Will Sonnet. They were looking for the kid's father, the, the Walter Brennan's son, because he's supposed to be a, dead, you know, he was a gunfighter, and they're trying to find him because, you know, the kid wants to find his father. And that was the whole plot of the, plot of the TV show. You do whole TV shows on a MacGuffin. It's great, and you guys know this. Um, so I decided watching Red River one too many times that a cattle drive would be a great MacGuffin. Think about it. The MacGuffin is what drives the plot, but in a series MacGuffin, you can put anything along the, see, I, I'm borrowing another from another old TV show called Wagon Train. I mean, the guy... You know, every season, he went from the east to the west. And at the end of the season, he took a ship back to the east and started all over again, picking people up. And you can do plots along the way. And that was the whole idea. The player characters are either part of the wagon train, or they can be um, advanced scouts for the wagon train, traveling, say, a couple days ahead, you know, to scout out where the cattle are going. Okay, and things happen to them. I came up with a couple of them. I did the finale at the con uh, last year. Uh, I came up with another one about a druid and a bunch of orcs. Um, there was another small one where a dragon wants to buy some of the cattle um, and things like that. And, you know, they can, as a cattle drive, you can get like big plots. 
you know, which have to do like, oh, I don't know, stampede, rustlers, you name it. And also, and so, but also if they're the scouts, they can get involved in smaller stories too. Like the thing with the Druid and the Orcs was a smaller story. And the thing is, the MacGuffin, this way the MacGuffin also sets a time limit for the players. And which means if they are the scouts, well, they got to resolve this before the cattle drive gets to this point. Otherwise, it, there's a problem. You know, there'll, there'll always be a problem. Say the town was there, was supposed to be there, that was totally decimated by some uh, uh, warring faction somewhere or some great monster like a dragon or something like that. And they are counting on this to ref, you know, refuel, refresh, and, you know, basically let the cattle, I don't know, eat for like, a couple days before they move on and there's nothing there that's a problem and uh, they've got to either solve it or go back saying hey don't go this way and they got to reroute, re reroute the whole thing which the uh, cattle master with the which the drive master will not be happy with um, so there's endless you can tack on endless plots personal plots like maybe there's a maybe they're passing through an area where there's a, a wanted criminal that's escape justice or escape the jail or something like that. And they hide amongst the cat amongst the, the cattle drive or the scouts find him and you know, that kind of thing. The gang's trying to get him back or something like that. So so there's always things and this is just a MacGuffin. That it gives the player it gives the characters a reason to do what they do. And they also also say that in most cases the MacGuffin becomes less and less important as the tale goes on, which is not necessarily that that uh, you know that that's not always true. Um, I'm gonna I'm setting one up for uh, my Fifty Fathoms game, my Savage Worlds Fifty Fathoms game, because I found I, the last place they were at was this cave. And they came into this room with an animated skeleton sitting at a table with a um, ship in a bottle sitting up there. And he was taking this old dagger and he was poking inside the bottle. And if you look in the bottle, there was a full size, a miniature ship with this crew of like skeletons on there trying to get away from the you know, getting away from the, from the, the dagger. He's, he's, he's having fun. So I did, you know, I just put that in there to, to mess with my players. I want to see what they did. I knew if they broke the bottle that the, their, the, uh, skeletons would come out and attack, but, uh, I hadn't planned anything further than that. Let's see what they're going to do. What they do is one character takes the bottle because the, the skeleton's not bothering them. You know, he's just like, Hey, hey want to <laughs> <you wanna help? laughs> um, one guy takes the skeleton's head, which is still talking. He sticks him in a sack. Another guy takes the ship in a bottle and puts it in another sack. Okay, fine. The story goes on. They have a climax of, you know, the, the, the story, the current story is going on. Fine. Well, they still got that ship and they still got that skull. And damn if I ain't going to make that skull a MacGuffin somehow. I'm going to have it some, because, you know, there's <laughs> characters out there that just can send, you know, other characters off on on stuff. Um, there's all, I, I keep thinking of Quantum Leap, where he had uh, the guys, the hologram, who follow him around, following him around, helping him stuff, but also would like help him out wherever the hell he landed. Um, things like that, you know, some some mission control thing. Well, that's going to be the skull. He's going to start talking and talking English or whatever passes for English in the game. And I haven't decided what I want to do. But once again, like the cattle drive, I can put whatever I want in his mouth. You know what I mean. And, you know, send them in any direction. He, they, I want to make it sure that he, they, he knows more than what he's letting on. And I want them to know that. And maybe not know what he knows, but know that he's, keep, you know, he's not telling everything. He's not, he's keeping his secrets. And so, because for a while, after I did that, I, I come up with a, okay, I got a campaign. I come up with a climax and this thing, and they still want to play. And it's like the, the old, okay, what do I do with them now? 
well, now I've got something. This is not a start of a campaign where we're still trying to work it out and, you know, just do a story. Now I know where they're going, what direction they're going, and what they want to do. So, and they've got a few things like the skull and the ship, the ship and the bottle. I'm debating whether or not I want to, if they break the bottle, I'm debating if uh, they do it on the outside. I want to, I haven't decided if they get a full ship, a full size ship out of, they break the bottle. Of course, they're going to have to fight the skeletons, get the ship, but I haven't decided that. But this is, this is one, one thing I'm, but like I said, I was having like serious writer's block on this until I remembered they had the skull. I still got kind of writer's block, but I learned a long time ago. It's funny. Charles Schultz, who used to do Peanuts, Charlie Brown, somebody asked him one time, because he'd done it for like decades, the trip, and they asked him, what do you do if you have writer's block? And they expected something like, oh, I just sit down and I just start looking at the news, blah, 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 blah. You know, I'm just trying, you know, I sit down and I try and figure, and he, no, he said right to him, he says, I don't have writer's block. He said, what do you mean? Everybody has writer's block. He says, I can't afford to have writer's block. I do this. I work through it. I keep going because this is my livelihood and I can't afford to have writer's block. So I just work through it. And I kind of remembered that and I, I really admired that. So right now, this is my, this is my idea thing of choice. Eureka, 501 plot, plot hooks, 501 adventure plots to inspire game masters by Engine Publishing. Very good book. I recommend it highly. EnginePublishing.com. It's done by the Gnome Stew people. GnomeStew.com, if you know who they are. And it's just filled, filled with plot hooks, filled with plot ideas. And so I'm just, and, and it's it's great. It's great organization. Just tells you how to do an adventure. Uh, it's got indexes in the back by genre, by, by uh, tag words, and things like that. And... So I'm just going to pull some stuff out there and just sort of fashion it around that skull saying, you know, he's saying, oh, you want this? You can do that. Or I know of this. Or I know. I just kind of want to build a backstory around it. So that is their working MacGuffin for the, uh, for the story. And so that is pretty much what I got for MacGuffin so far. Um, thank you, Alexander, for writing me. And if you guys want to write me and uh, drop off some suggestions, things you want to talk about, uh, you can get hold of me at oldmangrognard at gmail.com. So that's all I got for this time. So I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>